Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to produce an EDM track in the style of Mousetrap Records. This is kind of an homage to the late IO. I hope I can do his music justice, but I will try my best. As you can see, I'm back home today after my trip in Portugal. So let's get to it in this style. As usual, you can download this project file and all the samples and presets completely free below. I'm only going to be using the stock plugins within Ableton Live 10, but you can follow along in any door because these techniques still apply. So if you're using FL Studio or Logic X, you can still follow along and get loads of value from it. Okay, let's get to it. First thing I'm going to do is set the tempo. So a lot of mouse trap records are about 128 BPM, like that dead mouse slash IO sound. And then I'm going to create a pluck and we're going to work out some chords. Then we're going to go into the kick, the bass, the melody, the drums, the loop, some vocals, even some mastering and some arrangements. So there's loads to get through. Cool. So first thing I'm going to do is call this pluck and color it the holy color of all plucks, which is cyan. And then I'm going to use the wavetable to create a short, sharp, plucky, dead mousey, IOE sound. So that's what we're starting with. So if I open up the controls here, first thing we want to do is get the amp envelope nice and plucky, like this. Then we're going to select a saw wave. But now we need to assign that envelope to the filter as well to get that nice plucky sound. So let's turn the filter down and then apply some of that envelope. Whoops. We'll just apply the same envelope as the amp. So now we can do this. Let's have a crack at that. But that's still not quite dead mousey and IOE enough. So let's add some unison, get it sounding nice and fat already sounding better. Now we're going to add some reverb and if you look here on my auxiliary channels I've got a room reverb so it's just got a short decay, a bit of utility to boost it and then I've taken out the low end so let's listen if we feed some of that in. Nice mate, lush. Oh I like that. So we're going to base the track around those two chords so let's just program them in really quickly. Create that, call it Pluck. Oh, we need to name this track, don't we? Let's call it, as it's a tribute to IO, let's call it Tribute, no, Tribute, Tribute, and then you can download this because if nothing else, you've got this name stored forever in your mind. So let's start on the B, uh, on the D, sorry, and we're just gonna do it on the eighths. And we can see, because we've kind of started on a D, that actually this is in the key of D. And I think it's actually D major from the notes I was playing. And the way we can find that out is just draw them in. And you can hear that's a major. If it was minor, it would sound like this. But it's major. And we'll add the seventh as well. And we're just gonna copy that on every note. And then we will continue for the second chord. So it's a bit of a heart melter, really. Let's get this cracking as quickly as possible. Now check it out. Add some sustain. Now you hear where I'm going with this resonance. Nice, so that's our main pl pluck sound. Um, now we are going to add the kick, just to give it that really solid mousetrap kind of um, underpinning. So I'm going to, I'll just do it in MIDI today I think. So I'm going to go to my favourites, really important to kind of store your favourite sound so you can work quickly. That's quite dead mousy. I like that too though. We'll work out what, what goes best with the bass and we can always swap it out later because getting that kick and bass relationship is super important. So let's get this cracking. Just every beat. 
and you can hear that we need to duck that pluck with a sidechain compressor. So you can see here, you could use Nicky Romero's Kickstart or Steve Dudder's LFO tool, but I've just got a sidechain compressor here being triggered from this sidechain side chain track because I wanted to show you how to do this using just the plugins that come in Ableton. So you can just, and again, you can follow along if you're using a different door, you've gonna, you're gonna have the equivalent plugins as well. So let's just take the audio from there. So you can hear it's just allowing that kick to breathe through. And now I'm actually gonna put one on the uh, room reverb as well. So the room reverb stopped. Cool, right, next we are going to create a melody in that same key. So I'm gonna just create a melody track. I'm gonna make that cyan as well. And I'm gonna use a wavetable synth from the Ableton suite. So let's work out a melody first. I'm gonna do it on every other beat so it keeps that hypnotic kind of on and off beat. I'm just jamming on my keyboard. Cool, so that is the rhythm I'm gonna do. And I'm just gonna kind of play around with the notes when I've programmed them in, like this. So on every kind of upbeat where the hi-hat's gonna go. Nice. So let's just repeat that and then we're gonna switch it up the second bar. And then we'll choose a good sound. So let's choose a different sound. I'm just gonna scroll through these presets and have a listen because being able to select presets is a much faster way of working, so. Synth leads. That's quite nice. Sounds quite epic, let's try that. Right, get a bit of a sidechain compressor on there, just copying and pasting it. Oh yes, I'm already feeling this. So what I'm gonna do is I've added a hall reverb just in my template, so that's got a longer decay time. And I'm gonna give this double reverb to make it even bigger. But I'm gonna add the sidechain compressor to that reverb, so the whole thing's pumping as well. So it's starting to sound big now. Nice, okay, next thing we are gonna do is add the bass line, then we're gonna do some beats. So the bass line is easy. I'm just gonna take a few of the bass notes from those two chords. So if we just, uh, I'm gonna use Wavetable again because I want to work as quickly as possible for you guys and do it all within Ableton, as I said.
So as we can see in the plaque, this is a D and then this is an F sharp. So they're the two bass notes that we're going to use basically and let's make a nice sustained bass, keep things simple. We don't want to overcomplicate the idea. But we do need a fatter sound of course. So again, I'm just going to look at some of the presets. That's probably a bit too much as well. We want something that's really nice and... So I don't really like that bass. Let's find another one. It's a bit much. Let's just turn it down a bit. I like how that's sounding. And I want a bit of portamento to make it sweep between those notes. Ah, the second time, I think we should go up a bit, just add some more interest. go up here just two notes and then for a bit of interest we're gonna make it bass drop at the end of those few notes just to give it more of a intro into the next repeat so let's just drop this like so Oh, we need to make sure that we make the pitch bend 12. So you hear it drops at the end, but we need it to drop further than that. So at the moment, the pitch bend is set to 2.2. Let's set it's 12, so that's a whole octave it's going to drop now. And then let's just elongate these so the portamento kicks in for each of them. Nice. So let's add a bit of sidechain pump to that. Not too much because we like that, or I like anyway, that pumping, uh, sorry, the sustained sound of the bass. Oh, I know what's happened. The bass didn't reset to the back on the pitch. So that happens sometimes in Ableton. It's a bit annoying, but what you need to do is zoom into where you've done the pitch bend and just make sure at the last minute or at the beginning, actually, you just have a little node make a slight change. That's not going to be audible, but it just resets the pitch wheel back to zero. So there's a top tip for you there. And we want a kind of sub bass that's lower than this and that we are going to be able to uh, I'm just going to duplicate that same instrument so this is going to be our mid bass with some growl and we could do that by say adding something like the amp onto that makes it nice and fat but we'll take out the EQ because we want to take out the sub bass that's all stereo otherwise we can get phase cancellation issues and then on the sub bass we are just gonna change the oscillator to be in fact, we'll just start from scratch on a fresh one. We just need to make sure this glide is set the same so that the time of the slides are the same. Uh, so what we're gonna do is 
just drop in another one of those wavetables. Wavetail build me up, buttercup. Let me know if you're enjoying this so far, guys. Sorry I'm lacking energy. It was a long journey back yesterday, but uh, hopefully you're learning some cool stuff. Let me know in the comments anyway. Give me a hell yeah, subscribe to the channel if you like, and without further ado, let's continue. So this is our sub bass. Let's just listen to what's going on here. Okay, it's really low down, so we need to put that up an octave. Actually, it needs to go down an octave. And it needs to be louder. So this is really to bring in the weight underneath the sub, uh, the main bass. And then I've brought in one more sine wave, an octave above, just to really give it some harmonics. So this is without the sub bass. And this is with it. Whole thing's distorting a little bit, so I'm going to put a utility plug in before that compressor just to take the whole volume down so we're not distorting. And then we can always just turn the volume up on the mixer channel. Cool, let's add some kind of fatness to that plug. I'm gonna use just a little bit of saturation on there, so we'll just chuck a saturator on. Hopefully you can hear that lush sound is starting to come about now. So next we need to add some drums. Of course we do. What are you thinking, mate? So first thing we're going to do is keep it simple. Get a shaker sound in there. So let's go to my sample drum hits. We go to shakers. Where are you shakers? You are there. Easy. Just drag a shaker in every other beat. And when we get to the processing, it's going to sound super fat. Now let's get some claps in there. Right, we have got a few claps to use because I want to show you some layering stuff. So the easiest thing to do in Ableton is to kind of hot swap through and listen in situ until you find something that seems to sit well with the rest of the sounds. That's so important. You can just press the hot swap button. I like that, except I'm going to add a couple of real claps as well to make it nice and wide. I'll show you what I mean. So here we can just add this clap and we'll find another one as well. Here, another real sounding clap. I'll take the end off that though. It's a bit long. I just want the initial snap. And then this is what we're going to do. We can pan these two real claps left and right and then whack them just in front and behind of that main clap. And it gives it that really white. So this is without them. And this is with them. So it just adds some extra width, um, uh, which gives it a really nice kind of wide and human sound as well. Left one to get down. A 
subtle effect. You only need a subtle kind of quiet clap and then that's going to give it extra stereo width. Now we need a groove, so let's listen to some loops. Okay, I'm going to drag in one that I made before. So I've just dragged in one of my favorite loops from before. It's really short. It's just a shaker loop with a couple of tambourines in there as well. And it's because we want a subtle sound to just underpin the rhythm. That's all we need. Cool. So we need to do some mixing because the levels are a bit wrong at the moment, but I'm going to show you some cool techniques and we'll do a bit of mastering too. But before that, I want to add some vocals to this. So you can do, you can find vocals in several different ways. You can use splice.com, you can use loop cloud, or you can use soundbetter.com and actually work with a real singer. I'm going to drag in a vocal from loop cloud. I want something not too cheesy, but I want something quite emotional because it's got that sound to the track. Um, Never felt this way. That's not male, mate. That's female. Deaf. Definitely. Okay. I'm going to turn off store then because I know I've got one in here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. this isn't a very good example of uh, Loop Cloud, is it? Because why is that there? Ah, that's not a vocal, mate. Right, I'm just going to drag it in because it's on my hard drive somewhere. Bad luck, Loop Cloud. You don't look great in this one. <laughs> but now! So I'm just dragging it in. But now! And I'm going to make sure it's the right tempo. Calm down. Um, you're not really hitting that note. So it's okay because in Ableton you can just kind of splice it like that and then I'm going to just transpose it down. And I've chosen Pro Complex Pro as the algorithm, the warp al algorithm, because it works best for vocals. That's better. It needs to be a bit louder though. Cool, so now let's add some of this reverb, get it sounding epic, but we also want to do a bit of compression, take out the low end as well. So you can hear that reverb now, I've added it. Let's compress it because the levels are a bit all over the place. But now, as simple as that, you show me. Cool. Got some clipping on the master channel, which we're going to sort out. But first, I've just been inspired. I'm going to duplicate that because I'd like it to create a call and response for this vocal. This is a cool trick. That's what I want it to do. Okay, this is how we're going to do it with pitch bend. Show me. So I've got to transpose it. One. Put the second note out of tune, so I'm going to split it there and then make the second note in tune as well. So it's like a call and response. And the way we're going to make that kind of sound like it's coming from a different place is we're going to use this free tool. Uh, we are going to use the Ozone Imager 2, which you can download from their website completely free, Isotope. And we're going to spread this one out. We're going to make it really wide. Press the Stereo Eyes button. There, see? So it's like a backing vocal. And you could 
add some form and shift to that if you wanted. You could take it down an octave. So plus one, minus 12 is minus 11. And that's going to be an octave lower. Take the formants down. Again, 2 minus 12, because 12 semitones in an octave. So minus 10 there. So you can do that weird low voice effect if you want. I don't want to. Uh, it doesn't really suit this track. So we'll just keep it, we'll just keep it nice and soft. Okay, let's do something about this mixing and then we're gonna go on to the next stage as well. So let's just color those pink for vocals and we are going to take everything out apart from the kick and we're gonna have another go at the mixing. So let's turn everything down to zero. Okay. Now we're bringing the most important element. I know, let's add some mastering now. I know it's a bit naughty and I don't usually recommend doing this, but we want that really big dead mouse, uh, <laughs> dead mouse slash IO. Basically that mousetrap sound that's really pumped and loud. So let's do that now. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, I'll add this drum bus. Kind of fattens things up straight away. As you can tell. And then I'm going to add, I think a little bit of compression, maybe a glue compressor. Probably doesn't actually need it. It's not doing anything. I just leave that. Um, so instead I'm going to use the multiband dynamics and I'm going to use the OTT preset. Uh, just a tiny bit though because this is like pretty hardcore. Like, like that's full on. It just crushes it completely. But you can tighten it up a little bit like that. I like the bass. I want to make more of a feature out of that. So I'm just boosting this frequency just to add a bit more character to it. Oh, I know. Let's add a sidechain compressor to that shaker loop because it's kind of getting in the way a bit. So this is without it. I want a bit more of a real clap sound in there as well. Well, let's take out some of the low end of this shaker. I'm going to use the filter and then... Because we only want the high frequencies there. All these claps are a little bit loud. Let's take those down to minus 12, the side claps switch to mono actually and the way I've done that is by having this utility and then I can just switch it with whoops with my keyboard shortcut which I set up so I can test the mix in mono which just makes it easier All right go back to those drums Oh, I've got two of the same. Whoops. Cool. Okay, so let's get the plugs coming in. 
I know what we can do. Let's make a break as well. Let's just kind of get on with the arrangement. So with the pluck, we... Cool. So let's let's but, let's bring that all in together. But now, as simple as that, you show me that we could be more than that. A step at a time. But, but now, as simple as And we're gonna automate the pluck, we're gonna keep the frequency down and then Okay, this is what we're gonna to do to build up the tension. We're gonna create another auxiliary channel and we're gonna stick an echo on there. Again, doesn't matter which door you're using, you can just, uh, yeah, just create an auxiliary channel. Although for some reason didn't create them. Echo. And I'm gonna put the feedback up, 100% wet, because it's on that auxiliary channel. And then I'm going to feed in the send control just as we get to the break. And it's going to allow the sounds to continue, the vocal. Can't really hear it. You promised me that Cool, but I'm actually going to just wait until this second big cry so it can continue whilst the I'm tracks play Like that, just to make it much more epic And then we've got the build here. Oh, I, this needs a bit more sizzle, actually. I'm going to add... I'll take out the low end of that pluck so it's not fighting with the bass because it's a bit muddy. That's as much bass as we need. But we'll add a little bit more high end, so it's really sizzly. Oh, let's add another oscillator, actually. Make it bigger. Off, on. Just, just bigger. And we can feed in some of this secondary reverb. I'm going a bit complex now, but I'm just into it. So let's do this. Need him coming in as well.
that's what we're going to do. We're going to just repeat that second bit there. Copy that. There. Don't bring the bass in yet, now we do. And this is the big build. I'm just jamming as I go. And then you can go back down, kind of dropping it down again. So let's just quickly copy this first bit and We'll paste it after that and this is going to be our break and drop and I'm working as quick as I can guys so I'm almost done what else have I got that's pretty much it now we've done a bit of um, mastering don't forget download this below let's have a quick listen to it I'm going to fiddle as we go Have a big sweep. You promised me that I told you to give it back a step at a time. Let me believe. Keep that belief going on. Here's the bass. There you have it guys. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this. As I say, a bit of an homage to the late IO. May he rest in peace. I hope that you download the project file and thanks for watching. Don't forget if you want to join my eight week masterclass and seriously improve your skills in record time, then don't forget to check the link below. And until next time, cheers and happy producing.